Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today I would like to say that I love Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, for Jehovah's Witnesses especially, this might come as a bit of a shock. Uh, I've made a few notes again uh, that I'm going to uh, jot it for myself so I don't lose my place or him and Hall. Um, and many Jehovah's Witnesses might be surprised by this. They might not believe me at all. And I expect that. Now, when I say that I love Jehovah's Witnesses, don't mistake this for agreement. Um, in fact, don't dis mistake disagreement for hate or pride. In fact, I think that's a common fallacy that some Jehovah's Witnesses and some on the outside of this organization have that you know if you agree with me you know you're you're loving you're humble um, you're honest however if you disagree with what I'm saying you're full of pride um, you're you're you know full of hate uh, the, you're dishonest you know there's no correlation between the two in fact, imagine a person that was really enthused about this vitamin and thought it worked wonders for a person's people's health. Imagine if that person, uh, upon encountering someone who disagreed with them after a bit of research, said, you know, if you were a humble person, you would agree with me. But, you know, you're full of pride. Imagine if a person said, you know, then said, you know, why do you hate me so much? Why are you persecuting me? Well, with that in mind, I would like to read a few passages from the Watchtower. Uh, passages that, incidentally, I totally agree with. And I believe that these can make my point a whole lot better than I can today. Um, all right. The first is from the November 15th, 1963 Watchtower, and it says, It is not religious persecution for an informed person to expose publicly a certain religion as being false, thus allowing persons to see the difference between false religion and true religion. But in order to make the exposure and show the wrong religion to be false, the true worshiper will have to use authoritative means of judgment, a rule of measurement that cannot be proved faulty. To make a public exposure of false religion is certainly of more value than exposing a news report as being untrue. It is a public service instead of a religious persecution, and it has to do with eternal life and happiness of the public. Still, it leaves the public free to choose. My apologies if any hear my cats in the background. I put them up, a few of them up, so they won't disturb me. But you might hear them uh, banging on the door and meowing. Um, the second uh, quote I would like to read is the November 22nd Awake from 1974. It says, but ask yourself, why did Jesus publicly criticize religious men who claimed to serve the same God he preached? Was his motive bad? Not at all. Though he was mild-tempered and kind, his love for righteousness and his desire to aid honest-hearted persons moved him to criticize those who were teaching or acting contrary to God's revealed will. Also, Jesus' frank comments could help persons. For example, what if, in learning to use a dangerous machine, you kept making a serious error? Would you not be benefited if someone corrected you before you hurt yourself or others? Accordingly, Jews hearing Jesus' truthful criticism could be helped on the way to God's approval and salvation. Was it only Christ who could properly make such comments? 
No, for the Bible shows clearly that Jesus' disciples also called attention to religious error. For example, read Stephen's bold denunciation of the Jewish leaders. And note that the Apostle Paul branded the Athenian worshiper, worship of idols as ignorance. Further, out of love for truth, these first century Christians exposed deviations from true Christianities by those professing, by ones professing to be Christians. What though if you had lived then, and Jesus' followers criticized the religion of your friends and relatives? And now, it would have been easy to take offense. Still, we cannot deny that the disciples' comments, critical though they were, were right, and they were included in God's word. And with, as with Jesus, the motive behind the criticism was good. So the disciples were being Christian, not unchristian, in pointing out religious error. Consequently, it is not unchristian today to offer Bible-based comments. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a question. Consequently, is it unchristian today to offer Bible-based comments about another's religion? The scriptural answer must be no. True criticism that reveals faults in the teachings or practices of someone's religion might at first seem se severe. Yet, how should one react? Not like those who became violently enraged over Stephen's criticism. Rather, note the fine reaction of some Athenians who heard Paul's comments. They accepted Bible truth and became believers to their eternal benefit. Far from being rejected as unchristian, then, criticism based on God's word should be carefully considered for it can have real benefits. Think about these two quotes. And again, I totally agree with them. If you want to know what motivates me and countless others on YouTube and in other venues, well, there could be no better description than what I just read above. I spent the first 39 years of my life in this religion. They were my community. I understand how they think. I know where they are coming from because I used to be right there. Um, if any of you out there know me, um, you knew how many people believed I was very studious. Um, it turns out I wasn't studious enough, unfortunately. Um, the motivation behind everything I've done here on YouTube and articles on JW Struggle and elsewhere, um, they have not been hate. It's not been bitterness or nursing a grudge, but deep concern for the individuals that are still in, especially those of my family and uh, friends. If you knew me in the past, um, feel free to reach out to me, send me a message. Whatever communication we have is just between us. You know, I can be very discreet. I will be very discreet, in fact. I'm not part of this shadowy organization, the apostate boogeyman, you know, lurking in the shadows. There, there is no such thing. Uh, no boogeyman. You know, I'm, you know, I do not encourage people to disassociate or to take up signs and storm the Kingdom Hall or the conventions and protest loudly. Now, if people choose to do that, that's their choice. My advice for what it's worth is not to do either, but, you know, you know, I, I don't want people to follow me. I'm not trying to be a, a leader of any sort. You know, we, you know, one is the leader, we are all equals, brothers and sisters. Um, well, that's all I got for today. I've still two video series I'm trying to work on and conclude, but unfortunately I have writer's block, and so I figured I'd try to say, jot down some notes from the heart. Um, 
and say to all Jehovah's Witnesses out there that I love you. Um, hopefully everyone is excited for the new Star Wars movie coming out next year. And with that in mind, and, uh, um, may the Force be with you.